It is very much an honor for me to sit down with mm -hmm. Mr. Craig Swanson, who is the co-founder of Creative Live. Mm -hmm. um, this is very much a, honestly, it's a personal honor. Um, Craig has been an inspiration to me uh, since I met him about a year and a half ago. Um, I can literally say that he has changed my life. The company that he's made has changed my life. And it is just truly a magnificent um, uh, honor to be able to sit down with you for a good 15 minutes here and talk Creative Live. Craig, how are you doing? I am doing fantastic. I, you know, I don't come on camera as much as I used to. No. Like the early days on camera all the time. And it's kind of weird to be back on, on air. But walking around this building, just see what this is like becoming is just absolutely amazing. This it is, really is. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I know like a year and a half ago when I started, we were mm -hmm. in one room studio with a little loft space for office. Um, but I know that even that was growth from the the. <laughs> the humble beginnings mm -hmm. of Creative Live. You want to talk a little bit about those early days? So when Creative Live, so the first the first broadcast that that is that is now Creative Live was with a twenty five dollar Plantronic headset and a like a I don't know like a forty dollar webcam. So we started with really really basic roots and then just grew and grew and grew entirely from the audience. Basically, the the audience that supported us early on made this all possible, um, and. So yesterday, there was all this energy here in San Francisco. Everybody is putting everything together. I mean, there are so many moving pieces in order to make this stuff work. And um, it reminded me a lot of the, the first big workshop we did at Crave Live, which was Vincent LaFerre. Yes. Um, and I'm trying to think when that was. That was 2010. Ten. It was 2010, yeah. April, May. So probably May of 2010. Um, and... That was the first time we ever did a multi-camera shoot at Creative Live. So up to that point, everything had been one camera, software instructor teaching. Um, and then Vincent LaFerre, Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, came in to teach basically a workshop on filmmaking. And the only way that that workshop worked is because Vincent LaFerre was our first instructor because there were so many moving pieces. We had so much gear showing up. We went live on Friday. Um, we started putting it all together on... Wednesday. So Wednesday we got all the gear and you know Creative Live is huge now. I mean mm -hmm. so we're about 75 people now. Yeah. At the time there were three people. There were, there were basically three full-time staff members yep. um, and we had boxes of gear, only a theory on how it was only going to work and basically about 24 hours to put it all together. Not even sure if it was going no, to work. No, the, the, the night before We'd got everything working, and we hadn't quite figured out exactly how to make this one critical connection between the main cameras and the, like, the broadcast work. Everything was coming down to last minute. Um, and then I think that workshop, I mean, that, that workshop is what made Creative Live today basically possible. Now, when you were mm -hmm. sitting there trying to figure out connections and all mm -hmm. that, did you have the vision of what's going to happen or what we're doing today? Was that something that you even we're conceiving of at the time. So what, I mean, that's hard. I'm always thinking about possibility. So yes, mm -hmm. what Creative Live is becoming today was within the realm of possibility, but, I, but that doesn't mean I necessarily believed it would, it would happen. Um, the, the size and scale of what this is becoming is just been mind-blowing to me. It's just, it's been the biggest honor of my life to be involved in. Um, we have had so many incredible people be part of this. You, you were a big part of this, Thank too. You. I mean, there, there are so many people working behind the scenes on everything happening here. Um, it's, it's hard to understand when you're just sitting here and you, you, you see what the cameras point at, how much work goes into kind of bringing everything together that makes one of these events possible. Absolutely. And I am just incredibly honored that the, the people we've attracted. Because one thing about, about that Vincent, that first workshop, Vincent LaFerre, mm -hmm. one thing that a lot of people don't realize is a lot of the key people at Creative Live, you know, they worked at Creative Live volunteer for the first, you know, probably about the first year. There was an awful lot of volunteer, probably about half of the staff was volunteer. I think you were volunteering for. I was for a good three or four months at least. Yeah. And, and, Kenna volunteered for the first three or four months. I mean, the, so much of Creative Live was built because the people inside of Creative Live willed it to be 
even though we didn't have the resources, the, the technical backing, all the other things to make this thing come true. And, and now, there's that, still that same energy, there's still that same belief, and we also have the resources. And we also have, you know, the experience having made the impossible possible. And, and that's one of the most amazing mm -hmm. things that I've been able to watch mm -hmm. is just, you know, I'll be sitting, mm -hmm. early days I'll be, I was behind the scenes, and mm -hmm. then now on stage I just, I have no idea how some of the things happen, <laughs> even <laughs> as we're in the middle of making mm -hmm. them happen. Uh, but I think the people that you've attracted mm -hmm. is absolutely key to the success of what we've done here. Um, and can you talk a little bit about the culture of Creative Lab? I mean, this is something that people don't necessarily, um, I mean, whenever we have a student come in, mm -hmm. I always love talking to them and getting to know them a little bit. And uh, one of the things they always say is, it's really cool to be here because people behind the scenes are just like they are on, on screen. And you always yeah. wonder whether it's like up front or, you know, whether mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, hi guys. <laughs> but, um, but it is, <laughs> it's something that, that was when I first came, I fell in love with the people. Um, can you talk a little bit about the people of Creative Life? I, I, I just, I, I am absolutely astounded at the people that we have got. I mean, um, yes, I've not, so, so you know, uh, Chris, Chris was just talking about entrepreneurs, you know, $100, $100, $100 entrepreneurs. By the way, actually, Creative Live, I think, qualifies as a $100 startup. Nice. Um, I, I, I did the math. We, we actually did start with less than $100 to actually start this thing. Um, and I have been a self-employed entrepreneur my whole life. Mm -hmm. The largest company prior to Creative Live that I owned had, I think, 10 employees, 11 if you counted me. Mm -hmm. Creative Live is now like 75 employees, and I think it's, you know, with contractors, we're up to, we're, like, we're nearly 100 people involved in everything that's involved behind the scenes, what's happening here. And it still feels like a small group of really core true believers. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, yeah, so Teth in the sound booth, you know, Adam, I mean, there's just this, this whole crew. When, when you come, it, like when the students come and spend like three days at Creative Live, you get to see what the group, what the team is like behind the scenes. And that is the feedback I get again and again and again, is just that it is the, people have told me again and again, is the most, I'm not sure if fun's the right word, but the most dedicated, meaningful, people feel like they're creating something with a purpose. And I, I can speak to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's absolutely mm -hmm. why I got involved, mm -hmm. why I started volunteering was mm -hmm. just because I believed in what was happening and I mm -hmm. wanted to give back. Mm -hmm. And I think that from around, from every, every aspect of it, um, everyone believes in what we're doing here. Um, so this is our second studio. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we, this, is our, this is our fourth studio. Fourth studio. Fourth studio. Right. studio. It's our second location. Second location. Mm -hmm. Fourth studio. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to be a year from now? A year from now? Actually, okay. John, who is our COO, who basically makes all the trains run on time, has told me I can't talk about stuff like that. <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> fair. Perfectly fair. Because I will talk about things that I, that I believe are going to happen in a year, and then employees will go tell John, I want to put in the job for this thing I heard about from Craig. <laughs> <laughs> it's so. true. Well, and that's one of those things that um, just I've absolutely loved is that very open mm -hmm. atmosphere here mm -hmm. of, you know, I do feel like I can come to mm -hmm. you know, the co-founder of Creative Live mm -hmm. and sit down and have a conversation with you about things. Is that something that you consciously created, or is that just part of who you are. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know how to be someone else. Um, I cannot create without people. Mm -hmm. So, so um, one of the things I think is different about Creative Live is a lot of learning institutions, a lot of, um, a lot of small companies are built around the founders, it being a voice for the founders. Mm -hmm. And Creative Live is different. Creative Live is a platform that is designed to, to make available the best people that we can bring in, and that doesn't, and, and you don't see me on stage. You don't actually see Chase on stage on a regular basis. You know, this is a place to bring in other people to share the best that they can give to as large of an audience. Um, this was never intended to be, this, this, what Creative Live is, is all about providing an opportunity for people out there in the world to take the next step. Creative Live, for me, exists to take the next step for everybody. And everybody's next step is different. Um, some people's next steps 
seems so small to someone else, but to them, <clears throat> that next step can be as small as just daring to dream that they want something better in their life. Um, just the act of even just wanting to get paid for something that is a creative passion, um, just, to be, just to create it and to share it. The, there are so many little steps that people need to take in order to be able to make themselves available to take the big step. Um, and, and for me, that's what Creative Live is about, is every, every opportunity that we are doing something, someone is moving forward with something in their life. Um, we were talking, we were talking with, um, with potential chat hosts. So one of the things we do is we do some internal kind of training with, with, uh, um, with, with the team, kind of, you know, because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of new team members coming in. We have to figure out how to communicate what Creative Live is right. and how it works. Um, and we were talking with new incoming host roles. And I was talking about where I see Creative Live in the future. And where, where is Creative Live going to be like 10 years from now? And I don't know where Creative Live is going to be 10 years from now. But I think, and I know this from, from listening to people out there, I think that there are moments in time when innovators and leaders kind of come into existence in society. And, it, and it's not random. It's not random across the population. They come in little pockets. They come in pockets of time. There are, there are certain innovators that came at critical moments during the development of society. Um, you know, you look at like the, the actors, you know, they're usually there are groups of really leading actors all went to the same high school or different areas like that. And it's not because that's where the innovators were and that's where the leaders were. It's because there was something about that environment that allowed people who could be great to unlock that greatness and take the next step. And I think 10 years from now, there's going to be a new generation of leaders and innovators in the world that are going to share in their common story a moment at, in, at this place, watching something that happened here. Now, that doesn't mean that Creative Live is going to be around 10 years now. What, what, what happens with Creative Live 10 years from now, that's for us to, to, to do to execute well on or to execute poorly on it, you know. Right. But there is a change that is happening in the world based on the people who are watching this and what they are doing with their own lives. And that's, that's for me, what this is all about. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's enabling people to mm -hmm. really just live the lives that they want. Mm -hmm. uh, that's such a magical thing. It, it's, I don't know that the word magical is right. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a silly word to use for it, but it is. Uh, like I said, I can look at myself a year and a half, two years ago, and what I was doing versus the way that I am now, and it is a complete 180 because of the way that, because of your personal belief that we can be in charge of our lives and that we can make that happen. And that's something that I, I'm very thankful for. Um, there are many people out there. Mm -hmm. uh, who watch Creative Life, who have been a part of this, the community. Talk about the community. What are your thoughts? What are your feelings on, on them? I mean, you said that Vincent Lafayette, like, it, we wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for you people know, who supported it in those early days. So, I, I, I want to talk to the camera. So, I want to talk to the camera. Um, and I don't know why I'm supposed you know, this is kind of awkward. You'd think I'd know how this works because I'm supposedly around Creative Life all the time. <laughs> um, Nothing that we have done would be possible without the support of everybody out there, especially with supporting us in the early days. Because it is the audience, the community that, that supported us early on that makes everything we're doing possible. And for me, I am absolutely living my dream. I mean, I, I feel so incredibly fortunate every time I come to work. Um, and we are able to attract really great instructors. We're able to attract some of the best staff in the world doing this. And none of that's possible without the audience, without you guys that are out there supporting us, tuning in, talking back, arguing, sometimes poking us when you don't like what you're seeing. You are the people that make Creative Live exist. And I never forget that for a moment. Um, and it's really easy for me not to remember because, because when we started, like I said, it was a $25 microphone and nobody had any reason to pay any attention to us all. And the only reason people paid attention to us is because the numbers of the audience became significant enough and people spoke on our behalf strongly enough that other people started to listen. So especially for those of you who have been watching you know, for over three years or sometimes longer back, um, thank you. Of course. Um, 
and that sense of community mm -hmm. is something that is felt. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever people come, they say that they, you know, were in their mm -hmm. homes a lot of the time, mm -hmm. and they they just feel like part of the family, and that's mm -hmm. and that's always been true. I, I can say that from having watched mm -hmm. Creative Live before I came here. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see that it changing at all as we grow, or do you see that changing? Because if it if it is so key to our business, how do you feel about that as we grow and and bring in new audiences? Well. I mean, it's all going to come down to whether we are serving the people that, I mean, look, there's nothing, there's, n there's no reason people have to watch Creative Live. Creative Live exists to provide something special in the world. Mm -hmm. And when we hit it, the audience shows up in droves, and we, and, we, and we see the difference. We see the difference in people's lives. You know, we see people creating businesses that didn't exist previously. We see people taking risks. Um, we see people telling the story of what they're doing. And it's, it's not us doing any of that work. They're doing the work in their own life. We're just, sometimes, we're just doing nothing more than giving them an excuse. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I'm, I feel really humble about the audience. I mean, I, I don't feel like, you know, it, for me, it's responsibility. It, it's, you know, there are people that have given us the amount of attention they've given us, and it's our responsibility to live up to that. So where do I see the community going? Um, if it's becoming bigger, broader, um, you know, we, we, we started very strong in photography and now we've got a very strong entrepreneurial side of Creative Live and there's going to be other areas that we'll be focusing on in terms of bringing really new um, areas of combining that sense of creating a sustainable lifestyle for yourself underneath your creative passions. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, I mean, I consider us part of the Creative Live community. I mean, the, the create, you know, th th there's like this blurry line between Creative Live and the community because so many people you know, that get hired at Creative Live, we've got people right now that, I, that are in the audience that might be becoming a larger part of Creative Live, and that's just how it happens. People show up, become part of this place because they believe in something. 